Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us say P pressure mm, yeah. Okay. Let us say output output is equals to P P or say let us say den density density and then pressure P and then T is the temperature. Let us run this program. So, enter the altitude of flight in meters. Let us say I want at sea level. Let us see what will be what it is going to return. No? So, what I have is ok. So, if it is so the first one is greater than or equal to 0 rho naught times. Yeah, so there is a small correction here. Earlier, uh, here delta h should not be z minus; it should be h minus h1. So there is a small mistake. So please correct it. And then uh, the pressure at sea level is 1.01325. Earlier I entered it as 1.0325, right? 3125 something. So I missed this one. So please do this uh, correction. So 1.01325 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 5 is your uh, static pressure in Pascal at sea level. So, and then so the delta H should be the altitude input altitude uh, or the query altitude in geopotential altitude and then H1 should be the uh, for the first gradient layer it should be 0 and for the second gradient layer again H1 should be in geopotential altitude right. So, which is 11 kilometers uh, this uh, 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 the isothermal layer starts at 11 kilometers. So, we need to convert that to geopotential altitude. Again delta H remains same H minus H1, H is the query altitude and H1 corresponds to this particular for this particular loop H1 is uh, yeah the uh, from, from this equation from the above equation and this is like uh, using geopotential altitude you get 216.7835 right. So, if you solve if you run this program for 11 kilometers you will get this as an input right for this particular uh, yeah LCF condition and then yeah, we are more or less ready. So, what I will try to display instead of output here, I will I'll say I will simply display rho P pressure temperature right. So, let us run this program. I need to enter the altitude say at uh, at say at 0 kilometers or 0 meters in meters right. I need to enter it in meters. So, at 0 meters that is at sea level it is 1.225 and pressure is at uh, pressure is 1.01325 10 raise to the power of 5 Pascal and temperature is 288.16 Kelvin right. So, let us now run this for at uh, say 5 kilometers altitude which is 5000 meters. So, these are the corresponding values. So, now you will get this value. So, this is in gradient layer you, you can run this program for say 13 kilometers. So, okay, there is some small error in this isothermal layer equation multiplied by the variable E. Achha, so, this should be exponential, right? E x p, please. E x p, again the same thing, E x p exponential. E x p ok. Let us run this again. So, let us enter the query point uh, query altitude which is an isothermal layer at 1300 meter 13000 meters. So, now you get the corresponding density rho pressure and temperature. 
So, yeah, with this we can say this uh, this thing uh, this program works. So, I would like to make this as a function as I told you, which means so the output that I am expecting is first function, this is the syntax for this. So, function of so the output that I would like to see from this function is the rho and pressure, right. So, let us say rho and pressure is equals to or simply whatever you can also take out the temperature t. So, you will get the output as this with these three variables. So, I can use any one of the variable wherever I require. So, rho p and t and then given the name of the function should be same as name of your file uh, file uh, that you are going to save right. So, that is density and then so what should be the input value it should not it should be z right. So, z is the input from here which we initially took as an input directly right. So, I am not displaying this what I will do is return this function after this right that is ok you can leave it like this. So, I have saved this as a function right. So, now I will close this function ok. So, now you can see this has become a function. So, this is a m code and that is so I can group them by type. So, you can see this. So, this has become a function for example, if I simply say so density ok density at what altitude say at 1 kilometer ok. So, answer is 1 you will get only the first variable as a output here ok. Let me open this function ok. Let us save this then run this program again. In the command window when you do not assign any particular value right to this function uh, any variable to this function. So, it will directly give the first variable as an output here right. So, which is the density is the first output from this function. So, instead let us assume a a is equals to density density. So, let us just check whether this function is working or not. So, what the function is going to return? it is going to return you density, pressure and temperature. That means, you need if you have to find out these three variables right. So, this is the way we need to call this function whatever the variable that you want to call uh, the. So, let us say if you want the three variables as an output then you have to uh, mention these three variables here while calling this function. If you by default if you just call this density function let us say uh, density of uh, density at uh, then this function density at say uh, 1 kilometer. So, it gets it give it returns only the first first variable which is density here this is the first variable right first output from this function. So, if you want all the three then you need to mention density pressure temperature. Right. So, what you get is density pressure and temperature at this query point right. So, this fu function is working fine ok. So, now I have saved this as a function I will be using this function inside uh, whenever I would like to figure out what is the density at a given altitude ok. So, that is the reason why I explicitly mentioned it as density and without if I do not enquire about this p and t it will just return density as an output here right. So, I wish you should also complete this exercise ok. Now, get get uh, let us get back to our initial problem where uh, we need to find out what is. So, we need to find out what is the power required right that was the initial question consider the delta wing UAV presented in example 1 and find out the power required when the takeoff angle of attack is maintained as 5 degrees here ok. So, let us now uh, create a new script. So, let us say clear all close all CLC. So, just before that uh, we will look at the steps that you are going to follow ok. So, this is steps we need to follow is first of all steps for power estimation right during takeoff.
Okay. So, first step is uh, what is we can what are we considering the input right alpha takeoff maintained is input here. So, you can in fact vary this and see if you vary different angles of attack what is the corresponding variation in takeoff distance, takeoff time right and then uh, what is the uh, power required and the thrust required. So, once you have this using C L right is equals to C L naught plus C L alpha times alpha take off find C L prime right. So, now once you have C L prime you need to find out V prime assuming this particular C L prime when you uh, make the aircraft to move at V prime you will be able to generate lift equal to weight of the aircraft. So, that you are you can claim that you are airborne right. So, C L prime and consider V take off with a factor of safety which is 1.2 times of V prime here ok. So, this C L prime depends upon alpha take off if you are able to produce al alpha stall here then this will become C L max right the corresponding C L prime becomes C L max. But right now for this particular UAV the take off angle of attack is given as 5 degrees. So, this will not be alpha stall anymore then it will not be C L max right and V stall. So, we are making it a more general case right? and the fifth point that you have to look at is what should yeah, but what is the corresponding take off velocity for this configuration. So, if you if you have to achieve this take off velocity what will be the acceleration? A acceleration that you need to produce is V take off minus initial velocity, velocity initial velocity is 0 upon time right. So, assuming a uniform acceleration to achieve this velocity take off velocity what we have is V T O upon T okay, where initial velocity is 0 meter per second. So, if we have to achieve this acceleration why because why we are calculating this we need to find out what is the ultimate let us say at a later stage we will come up with t is equals to this particular equation. So, the, the t is equals to m times a. So, we need input a here. So, how do you find out a there? So, this is like m times a plus d plus mu times w minus l this is what we require is not it. So, d is a unknown a is unknown. So, a we are finding out from here. So, so we will see how do you find a. So, this if you if I want to find t I need to know what is a d and l right. So, mu is given as an input this is an input mu is an input and yeah we do not know what is uh, l here right. So, but we figured out what is l prime right. So, and this implies l is equals to yeah ok. So, C l prime right. So, we you know what is v prime and similarly you can find out what is L, L prime which is or L during the for that particular flight condition which is half rho V square. So, we are talking about so thrust required during takeoff right final final. So, you need to figure out this velocity let us make this as an explicit step here. So, let us say there is another step which talks about L is equals to half rho V takeoff square S times C L prime. So, C L prime is what you are going to get maximum because you are not you will not be able to change the angle of attack when it is du during the ground run right. It is already fixed because of the um, way it was designed the undercarriage was designed right. And so, and the in, uh, based upon the what you call uh, mount uh, wing incidence angle. So, but we do not have a wing incidence angle here it is a wing alone configuration. So, what the maximum the C L that you can get at the takeoff velocity is half rho V, v takeoff square times S times C L prime right. So, this will be definitely you know more of the configuration ok. So, uh, if it achieves this particular condition. So, for a given velocity ok or to be frank you can even neglect this lift so that you will get to know what is the maximum thrust required during takeoff. If you can neglect this particular quantity assuming the lift is not so high right. So, you can get at, uh, at uh, so similar to that of condition when you just started the ground run 
lift is 0. So, mu times w is a drag or the resistance due to friction, right. So, but at takeoff you have lift, right, almost during the entire procedure which is w minus l, okay. So, now this will be another step where you will find out what is Cl prime and then similarly you find out what is drag which is half rho v square s times C d naught plus k C l prime square. Okay. So, this is this is a step before this let me say this as step uh, 7 you have step step 8 here and the step 6 should be like how do you decide this. We know s is equals to u t plus half a t square right is not it. So, from here since the initial velocity during this ground run is 0 assuming a constant acceleration. So, what you have is s is equals to half a t square. So, this implies once you substitute this the acceleration will be uh, s is equals to v take off upon multiplied by t upon 2 right. Okay. So, now what you need to decide is what is the length of the runway right. Depending upon the length of the runway you will be able to find out what is the corresponding time required to achieve this particular velocity right assuming a uniform acceleration. And once you know what is the v take off and v and the time uh, you know v take off and once you fi figure out what is the time taking uh, taken for this take off. So, you will be able to find out the required acceleration. So, this acceleration can further be used in this equation to fi find out what is the take off thrust required. And then so, there are many methods like this is the one that I generally adapt and the power required for take off is equals to take off uh, thrust required for take off times the velocity take off. So, this will give the maximum maximum power right. So, I am not uh, doing it for the entire process right. So, what what is the power requirement variation from 0 to the maximum uh, or, uh, or the point where you achieved v take off. I am just talking about the final number v take off what is the power required at v take off. So, that will be the maximum anyways. So, I would like to see that uh, what is the value and its variation with take off distance how it is varying with take off distance. So, the input variable here is take off distance it is a variable input variable. So, I keep varying the take off distance I make it as a variable of this uh, uh, pro subroutine Fig I, from there I will be able to figure out what is the time taken to uh, achieve that v take off velocity right. So, what is the time taken to achieve v take off Okay. So, once I know this particular time I will be able to find out acceleration which is step 5 acceleration for take off is uh, required is we take up uh, take off upon time. So, that that means the length of the runway matters here how much length of the runway you are, uh, it is available for you. So, from there find out what is uh, lift uh, what are this factors. Right. So, mu is given as an input is a you you can have acceleration as an input for equation 8 right or step 8 and drag from step 7 and as well as this mu which is w minus l from. So, at take off to be frank this particular value is 0 take off. So, uh, see this this value keep decreasing as the uh, uh, velocity increasing because the lift keep increasing is not it. So, at 0 velocity you have the maximum which is mu times w at uh, uh, yeah mu times w and at at z v is equals to 0 and this equals to z and this is 0 at l is v take off assuming all so v take off is equals to 0 at v take off it is no at v take off this is 0 why because w is equals to l or in fact l is greater than w. So, this becomes negative. So, let us keep it as it is for the time being. Uh, so, for the initial uh, program. So, we are going to write another subroutine. So, so now the aim is input ok. So, no need of ok input just want if I just want to see the screen uh, command window then 
okay. Press enter to process the code. So now alpha t takeoff velocity. So we have we we are using the same aircraft, right? Is in the same UAV. So performance instead of level flight, I'll say takeoff. Okay, save. In fact, not exactly the performance. We are talking about uh, power requirement. Okay. So and we were told that we can use the data from the previous aircraft. So let me put uh, plug in all these variables. Uh, directly from this previous program. So, for takeoff performance, this uh, these are the input geometric parameters because since the UAV is same, so all these parameters remain same and then uh, alpha takeoff, right. In, in, so, this is like the second block. So, uh, takeoff input conditions. So, what are the takeoff input conditions? Alpha, right? Mm, let me say it as AOA angle of attack underscore TO takeoff, right? That is uh, which is fixed, which is constrained due to the design of undercarriage, which we discussed here, is not it? So, it is constrained because of the design of the undercarriage. So, alpha takeoff is fixed due to during takeoff, say if you do uh, when you when you can't deploy flaps for that particular UAV, you can't change or alter the CL value during the takeoff, right? For this particular configuration, so angle of attack during takeoff is five degrees. That is what it was mentioned. So five times pi by one eighty. I'm converting it to radians. So this is in radian. So takeoff. Angle of attack in radians. Okay, so also we require uh, aerodynamic parameters as an input, right? So we'll just copy paste these values here, and then CM alpha is also given. Okay, in K, we may not be requiring all these parameters, but still uh, we'll try to copy them and then delete it. What whatever the that are not required. So, C D naught is 0 0.03, C M naught is 0 0.01, C M naught is not required, C M alpha, C M delta is not required and then C L delta is not required for our current program. Okay. So, so these are the few aerodynamic parameters that we need to give as an input. Apart from this takeoff conditions, what we have is mu, right, mu, mu or coefficient of friction say which is 0 0.05 right coefficient of friction okay so and then what do i require as an input nothing else i guess so coming back to this so alpha takeoff is an input from here and then yeah so, C L naught is input, C L alpha is input which you already copied, the aerodynamic parameters are copied. Now, let us find out what is C L prime here. So, C L prime, so now let us start programming. So, that means this entire steps. So, what I need to find out is C L prime, right? C L 1, let it be is equals to C L naught which is is an input here C L naught plus C L alpha. I just copy this so that I will not make any mistake here. C L alpha times alpha. This alpha is nothing but AOA underscore takeoff. Okay. So C L alpha is in uh, per radian and then alpha is also in radians. Okay. So this with with this C L one I will be able to find out what is V one, V one is equals to square root of 
टू टाइम्स डब्ल्यू अंडर स्कोर एस विंग लोडिंग राइट अपॉन डेंसिटी डेंसिटी टाइम्स वील सी वॉट इज द डेंसिटी डेंसिटी टाइम्स सी एल वन ओके सो दिस इज योर वी वन सो वी टेक ऑफ वी अंडर स्कोर टी वो टी वो स्टैंड फॉर टेक ऑफ सो वी टेक ऑफ इज इक्वल्स टू वन पॉइंट टू टाइम्स ऑफ वी वन लेट एस एश्यूम दैट ओके and then what i need to find so this so the acceleration so s is a variable here so depending upon the value of s i'll be able to find out what is the corresponding time taken for take off so t for take off right t for take off t for take off is 2s upon v take off right two times s yes underscore t o take off right okay upon v underscore take off okay so now s is a variable here right isn't it so what i'll do is for s underscore take off okay so s underscore take off is varying from what say let us start with 10 meters or say let's start yes 10 meters when increase it by 10 meters every increment and it should be up to 200 meters let us say okay so if say this is my take off distance then every time all aoa is constant cl1 is constant so that's not a variable here so v1 is also not a variable so we take off is Uh, is not a variable here so what is the variable is time to take off because it depends upon s take off right so s take off is a variable so automatically t t, t to take off will also change so so let us say this is i comma 1 depends upon s take off there right so i will try to store this s take off also as a new variable s underscore take off right capital take off is for storage purpose so i'm storing this as what uh, i comma 1 is equals to s underscore take off okay distance for take off in meters so so we take off anyways is not a variable so it depend can you see that like can you appreciate this a take off is constant and hence cl1 is constant and v1 is constant because we are not changing the aircraft uh, uh, right and then at a given altitude this is constant so here density should be an input right isn't it so what i can do is press enter the process the code instead of this the input that i would like to take is z right let us say z is equals to oh have we used z anywhere here no so z is equals to is an input let us uh, enter the altitude of flight so since i am uh, asking uh, for only one output so it automatically returns density right so that means so le let me do, do that as well so density is equals to uh, so den let us say den is equals to density of z right so i'm i'm querying this so i'm labeling only uh, i'm re i require only one variable here right uh, which is density for this particular program so i am i am calling only one output here which is den, den right so den is equals to density of z returns only first output which is density of so it was considered here okay that i am trying to delete this part so this now like user's choice you can enter the density of uh, altitude of flight enter the altitude of flight in meters right so now that comes in as an input here accordingly okay so s take off is clear which is uh, from here and then using the same s take off uh, i'll be able to find out what is time to take off so for this program we require some inputs to follow which is i 
I is starting from 0 right. So, for storage purpose, so I is equals to I plus 1 ok. And then so we need to find out what is the acceleration required which is v take off times t upon t. So, this is an approximation acceleration for take off again it is a function of distance right that is available. So, take off distance that is available. So, which is again v take off so, v take off is constant upon t to take off right? which is a variable i comma 1. So, whatever the acceleration for take off depends upon that particular t take off right. So, the for that particular and which in fact depends upon that s take off which is a variable of this program right? and then input variable in fact there. So, a take off is done now I can find out what is C L. So, mu is also required. So, mu is given. So, what I require further is what is D and what is L right. Let us assume no in a in some, let us assume there is no L acting here ok. So, let us also neglect this so that we have adequate drag you know adequate uh, uh, what you call uh, friction still at the take off time right. So, which is mu times w fine. Uh, okay. Or you can say this prime is equals to when you run at this particular velocity this will automatically disappear is not it. If you plug in that this will automatically disappear. So, you can do that, but in uh, in like uh, what I will try to do is I will take some at least. So, at take off this is lift is definitely equal to weight. So, this becomes 0 but still I would like to have it just before take off I want to uh, have say about uh, say 50 percent or say uh, 10 percent of this no 10 percent of this particular mu times w right that is uh, that I would like to consider still as uh, a significant number during take off right. So, let me use that 90 percent so 10 percent of that mu times w instead of uh, w minus l I would like to use thrust during take off is equals to. So, this is again a variable right is not it. So, thrust during take off times i comma 1 is equals to mass times mass of the aircraft times acceleration to take off i comma 1 ok plus the drag that you need to overcome and then plus the frictional force mu times w mu times w minus l right. So, but I would like to omit this l ok I would like to omit this yeah omit this l and then take 10 percent of this right 0 0.1 times 10 percent of this mu this is at the take off condition right. I am try, trying to take the frictional force as 10 percent at static force right uh, 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 during the static condition ok. So, mu times w mu is as an input w is the weight of the aircraft which we have. So, small w is it uh, this one is small w. So, let us change this thing to small w. So, this will automatically become an input from this geometric parameters and mass of course, is considered as an input. So, mass times the acceleration plus drag times mu right. So, this is what the total thrust required. So, but for this equation to solve we need to know what is drag here right is not it. So, so drag again is a function right is not it. So, drag of
a comma 1 will it be so drag is half uh, done half done half row v square v is nothing but here v take off right so it will not be a variable anyway v take off square half row v square half row v square times uh, reference area times c d naught c d naught plus k times c l square ok. So, c l is lift coefficient c l 1 square here which is c l 1 square which is constant. So, I this is not a variable here of this program. So, this is simply drag you are figuring it out based upon v take off square times reference area c d naught plus k c l 1 square ok. This will get you the details of, of drag. So, I think we are more or less done. So, the power required for take off is I comma 1 is equals to power required is thrust required during take off times I comma 1 times uh, velocity during take off. Okay, so, let us end, end this program here. So, now the output here will be, so based upon the take off distance, uh, so the variable here is a take off distance and you will find out what is the time for the take off, uh, yeah take off uh, to happen and then acceleration that is required and then the thrust as well as the power required. So, once you know what is the thrust and power required, you will be able to understand the uh, the requirement from your power power plant right for the, so this has to be delivered by your power plant to this particular uav okay so let's have a pictorial uh, or say let's have a plot of these variables with take off distance right so figure 1 it's a uh, subplot so, how many variables I can see 1, 2, 3, 4 right 4 variables here. So, the 4 variables here are uh, so the let us have 4 comma 1 comma 1 is a subplot and we are plotting what uh, take off with respect to take off distance how this is varying right. So, s underscore take off on the x axis and then first thing that I would like to know is what is the power variation due, due to take off. Oh. Okay. Okay. So power variation during takeoff. Why label? So I can simply copy this. Okay. Y label is power to take off. Okay. Power underscore T underscore O. Power take off in watts. Okay. I am not mentioning the unit, but that is in watts. Okay. So this is in newtons and this is in watts. So subplot this is done. I will try to just I will paste this and then say so plot 4 by 1 of 2 and 3 and 4. The second one I would like to see what is the thrust required for takeoff and then the third one I will talk about acceleration during this takeoff and its variation with the uh, takeoff distance and the time taken for the takeoff to have and the time we yeah, are required for takeoff. So, this is like thrust for required and then acceleration meter per second square time in seconds. Okay. So, this is x, x label 
is uh, take off s underscore t underscore o right it's take off distance in meters so i'm not giving the units here let's say you can still have watts right in the brackets we mention units as watt and then thrust for takeoff is newtons and then this is in meter per second square and this is in seconds okay so just let's run this code so so from the question yeah, if you look at the question so we need to uh, find this takeoff performance from a runway which is at 1000 meters right so with a propeller efficiency of 0.95 yeah we forgot to mention about this so this is like power required right so power required during takeoff pr during takeoff let us say this is power required during takeoff by the aircraft and now the engine has to deliver a shaft power right so ultimately so the engine or the brushless motor here has to deliver the shaft power so the shaft power that engine needs to deliver should be power available upon or power available which is equals to power required by the system here right so this is power required by the system upon shaft power so the shaft power that the engine has to deliver is power required by the system upon efficiency of the propeller so so let us say efficiency of the propeller here is input uh, aerodynamic characteristics let us say e and effic efficiency underscore p yeah, propeller efficiency right uh, otherwise eta p is equals to efficiency of the propeller is 0.95 is given from the data so the power that need to be delivered or ps is shaft power let us say so ps is shaft power during take off is it is depends upon the power required by the system upon efficiency of the propeller okay eff underscore p fine so let me add one more plot uh, here apart from the power required so it's say let's have five sub plots here uh, so this is 5 uh, by 5 of 2 5 of 3 and 5 of 4 so 5 of let's say this is third one this is fourth one this is fifth one okay this is second one i want to add one more this is power required it becomes pr and pr underscore take off right so let us say this is power shaft power that need to be delivered by the engine so okay so this becomes the first plot here again this is in watts okay so we'll run this code i think the earlier code is already Okay, I have break this code. Now I'll run this again. So, so now it, uh, it like it will ask us to give an input, enter the altitude of flight in meters. So that is one thousand meters, right? So, okay, there is some error here. We'll just see. So this is mu times w, right? So here mu times w it is there is. Okay. we have corrected this and then again yeah so this this is the uh, take off distance in meters right so this particular uh, yeah you can see here uh, the x axis is take off distance in meters and time to take so the acceleration is like uh, so uh, at shorter distances as we know that you no know, you need higher acceleration so as so if you have a runway which is 100 meters so you hardly require an acceleration of 2 meters per second right and yeah you can see that the corresponding thrust required is about 
14 newtons which is 1.4 kg of thrust required in this case and then the power required for this is about 269 for takeoff is about 269 if you if you want to uh, make it uh, take off within 90 meters distance right so and then uh, shaft power that we need to deliver is so this is about 269 watts 270 watts and shaft power that you need is bit more than the 283 watts okay so this for a brushless motor this power need to be given from your battery isn't it it's a electric motor you need to supply this power from the battery so you have the voltage right you know number of cells and the voltage of the battery times the amount so this is from here you can figure out what should be the current drawn from the battery isn't it so you know what is power required here shaft power so once you know what is shaft power required so now i need to connect this uh, say this brushless motor uh, to a speed controller and a battery let us uh, okay. so so i need to connect this brushless motor to a speed controller unit let us say there is a speed controller so from this speed controller again now i need to give power su power supply to this speed controller right so this happens from right so okay so that means this battery is having certain voltage right so and there is uh, a speed controller electronic speed controller esc and you have your propeller attached to this so what you are delivering is ps here so there is the ps is output from the motor right and the input is electrical power right let us say p electrical so the efficiency electrical efficiency e eta e is output p shaft power upon p electrical right so the p e is ps upon eta e now once you have this electrical efficiency say about 90 percent then you know what is p electrical power that you need to give so this p electrical is equals to voltage times current right so now you can decide which cell which kind of based upon the like so in general this brushless motors operate over wide range of uh, potential difference so depending upon yeah the requirement of this motor you can now have a feasible uh, have have an option to select the respective voltage right so and then if you want to have low power low current uh, drawing uh, system then you need to choose for a high uh, voltage uh, uh, yeah supply high voltage supply yeah so that means you need to go for high cell uh, lipo batteries or lithium polymer or any other that you would like to power it up no? that you like to use to power up the system so that is your electrical uh, power required by the system right so this is how you can decide uh, what is the power required during takeoff for this particular uav thank you